The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Strauss here with realagriculture.com. It's time for another canola school episode. I had the opportunity to catch up with Autumn Barnes, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. Autumn and I chatted about plant establishment in your canola crop, some of the target populations you're going to want to hit, what sorts of things you are looking for at this time of the year when you are out there and you're counting plants. Check out the conversation now. Yeah, so really just excited that anybody would be out in their field looking at canola establishment. Um, it might not be the most glamorous job tromping around in a field and counting plants. It might seem basic to some, but it's actually a really important piece um, to understand, you know, how many seeds you're putting in the ground, how many are coming up and why. Um, we know that canola is a premium input or canola seeds a premium input. It is not a cheap thing to buy. And so we really need to treat it like the premium input that it is. So. Uh, account for, for every seed. So what we'd like to see this time of year um, as canola is coming up out of the ground um, to, to go out, take a look, find any areas where there's missing plants, try and figure out why. Sometimes it's just because you haven't left enough time for it to pop out of the ground. Um, you know, some, sometimes it's moisture. Sometimes, uh, you know, the ground's been cold, you seeded deep. Um, perhaps you had your, your too much seed place fertilizer. So there's lots of different reasons. So this time of year, it's really about getting out, you know, scouting weeds, uh, you know, and trying to understand the, the plants as they're coming out or coming up out of the ground. Um, seedling disease, especially as we're getting a little bit cooler and wetter right now, maybe more of an issue. Herbicide carryover issues in, especially, you know, in parts of the prairies that have been really dry, especially on lower organic matter soils. Um, something to be on the lookout for sure. And then as those seedlings get bigger past that two to four leaf stage, usually after your herbicide application, um, get out and actually start recording your plant uh, establishment numbers. So that's when you'd have your, your plant count hoops or rings and, and toss them and then go and actually count um, the number of plants you have and record that. And so we actually have a new tool this year called Canola Counts um, that I will shamelessly promote now um, that uh, is going to be mapping plant density and emergence across the prairies. And so, yeah, we hope everybody gets out in their fields. You enter, it's, it's really easy. You can do it right, right through the field. So actually I could do it right here without my phone. Um, enter my contact info, auto locate myself. And then if I'm gonna be entering information for a number of different fields or a number of different farmers, I can name my fields and farms if I want. Um, then I just enter my plant density. Um, it'll calculate my emergence and I hit submit. It takes about 60 seconds. So. Um, we're really excited about it. It's the first time we've, we've tried crowdsourcing data before and uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to it and the data that comes from it. So how do producers, uh, like obviously you said they can do it on their phone, but how do they, is it at canolacouncil.com or where do they find it? Yeah, so they go to canolacounts.ca. It's housed on the Canola Calculator uh, site as well. So depending on how you want to go, but canolacounts.ca. And you know, the tool in one part is about collecting this data so we can, we can annually map emergence and density over the prairies. But uh, you know, in equal part, it's also so that we can encourage everybody to get out and count plants and make it part of their, their regular routine in the springtime. So walk me through the process. You're going out to your field right now for maybe a new grower that's never gone out and kind of really scouted canola. What, what sorts of things are you gonna be looking out for? Like pests, you're thinking? Well, or any sort of, you know, you're looking at, you're looking for anything on the leaves or anything that would indicate that it might not be coming up to the same, what you're hoping it'll come up to. Yeah, so discoloration of the leaves. Canola is a really fun plant in that it likes to change color when it's upset. Um, so discoloration of the leaves, discoloration of the stems, you know, red, purple generally means canola is unhappy. Um, also look for feeding notches from things like cutworms and flea beetles. And those plant count hoops or plant count rings are actually a really nice way to try and get a little bit more, um, I guess, reality in flea beetle numbers. Sometimes our eyes get drawn to the worst part of the field and we'll go and we'll count and see, oh my gosh, like, you know, this area around the entrance is just awful for flea beetle. What am I going to do? But if you have a hoop or a ring or something with you, you can toss, it'll actually get you a more realistic average. Um, anyways, yeah, so flea beetles, cutworms, um, any discoloration that could be due to, you know, anything from cold stress to herbicide carryover, um, seedling disease, things like that. Um, sometimes, you know, as the seedlings get a little bit bigger, there's this special sort of shade of blue that they'll turn when they're getting pinched off at the roots, whether it's from 
um, you know, something feeding on the roots, but, but specifically um, seedling diseases that turn into like a girdling root will turn the, the canola a little bit of a shade of blue. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of things to look at. I don't think it's ever boring walking through a canola field. Absolutely. And later on, when you really are looking at those uh, stands, what, what's your target population? What should producers be looking for? Yeah, so we'd like to see five to eight plants per square foot um, on average across a field uniformly. Uh, so anywhere in that range is good. I mean, you might end up a little bit on the lower end if you're not so worried about leaving a, a bit of wiggle room for flea beetle. If you're not so worried about, um, for example, the length of flowering window or your days to maturity. But, you know, if you have your living farming in an area with a shorter growing season, then you're definitely wanting to want to be up at that, you know, seven, eight plants per square foot. And as well, if you have issues with uh, with weeds in, in a given field, having a thicker uh, canopy of canola that's going to kind of close over quickly is going to be a lot more competitive. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, just to ask everybody to go to canolacounts.ca this summer and thanks to the Provincial Grower Associations for funding the project.